Now today we'll be testing and replacing an air fuel sensor, which is really an oxygen sensor. This just has a much wider and leaner range regarding the fuel mixture readings that it can do compared to your traditional oxygen sensor. But that being said, we'll test to make sure power is getting to the sensor. We'll test the sensor itself and show you how to remove, install a new one, get you back on the road. Now we can get access to the air fuel sensor, which is right there on this vehicle. So what I'm going to do is just remove this front air dam and get direct access to it. If you cannot get access to the sensor from up top, then you'll have to jack up the vehicle and get it from underneath it. And these are just flat heads. Just turn them counterclockwise, one or two turns. Take a flat head, lift it up, and that's it. Now we have clear access to the front air fuel sensor. Now interestingly enough, the rear one, so if you're doing this on a Subaru, the rear one is right there, okay? Now before I remove this, I'm going to spray some uh, PB Blaster, let it sit for around a minute. The other thing is make sure you do this obviously when the exhaust is cool. Don't attempt to do this when the exhaust is hot, you can actually ruin the exhaust. Now as that soaks, I just want to remove this clip that's keeping all the wiring nice and straight here. So I just have these, they're almost 90 degree type of pliers. Just press down here. Don't want to crack or break this. There we go. And then I just need to disconnect the harness connector leading to the air fuel sensor. So I'm just going to, well, let me first do this. Sometimes you can wiggle these out yet. Yeah, now you have to be gentle. This being eight, eight years old. And, uh, you know, constant heat. They can become quite brittle. And then where my thumb is, there's a tab. You press down on that tab. Don't pull from the wiring. Pull from the body. Or the plastic body. It can be a little difficult. There we go. Okay. So now, this is free and clear. Okay. Now the first thing I want to do is verify that power is getting to this harness connector. In other words, if there's a break or a cut in this wiring and power cannot get to this harness connector, then the air fuel sensor cannot power on. Okay, so this is going to the sensor. This is from directly from the vehicle. I want to verify that power is getting here. Very simple. Now to do that, you need a digital multimeter. These typically cost $20 to $25. In this case, Sears, Home Depot, Lowe's, local auto parts store, they all have them. So I'm going to turn on the ignition key to the on position. Don't start the car. Just turn it to the on position, and we should see battery voltage from this harness connector. Now, if you've never used one of these, it's very, very simple. In this case, we want the volts. So VDC setting, and you have two leads coming from the multimeter. Your black lead is your ground lead. So you'll put the black lead to any good metal point on the vehicle, and the red lead, I'll show you exactly what you do with that. So we have four prongs coming from this harness connector. So again, the black lead on the multimeter is ground, and the red lead, I want to touch the prongs. Now, the question becomes, which prong do I touch? Because you want to see battery voltage here. So approximately at least 10 volts you want to see, but ideally 12 volts. So if we touch the top right-hand prong, we have 12.4 volts. That verifies that power is getting to this harness connector. This is That means the wiring is good. That's fantastic. But again, let's say if you try the other ones, 1.8, that's way too low. 2.2 is way too low, and 0 0.01 is too low. So that this is the correct prong. Now, the best thing you could do for any vehicle is purchase the repair manual specific for that vehicle because in that manual, it will tell you exactly which prong you need to test. So in this case, it happens to be the top right-hand quadrant, and that verifies that this is in good shape. So let's test the air fuel sensor itself. Now to test the sensor, we do need the multimeter. In this case, we want the ohm setting. That's the omega symbol. It's a resistance test. That's all we're doing. And if we take a look at the, let me zoom in here so you guys can see this. Again, if you take a look at the, uh, at the connection here, we have the four prongs that match up to this guy that we just tested. 
Okay, I just had to readjust everything so you guys can see the reading here. So what we want to test is terminals 4, that's the bottom left, number 4, and number 6. Now it doesn't matter which lead, in other words, if black goes here or here, does not make a difference. Just make the connection. Let's see what kind of reading we come back with, okay? We should see between 2 to 3 ohms. That's a good reading. And as you can see, we have 2.5 ohms. So that verifies that this sensor is working perfectly fine. Now, if you do this test, in this case, the maximum is 50 ohms. Anything over 50 ohms, the sensor is bad. Or, if you're not getting a reading here whatsoever, then the sensor also is bad and needs to be replaced. Let me show you how you can do that. Now, to remove the sensor, I'm using a tool specific to remove oxygen sensors or air fuel sensors. These you could maybe pick up for around 10 bucks, but this just simply fits over the end of the sensor. This is a half inch drive. Take your ratchet and that's it, okay? So just place the tool. I'll come in for a close up in a moment. Let me make sure it's nice and tight on there. Okay, and just so you can see this. Okay, so it's nice and snug on the sensor. Grab your ratchet, and let's see what happens here. Now make sure it's nice and snug because you don't want to strip this, that's for sure. There we go. Okay. That one was not too bad. Sometimes they can really be solidified on there. Use PB Blaster, it's huge, 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 huge. Okay. And there you go, there's your old sensor. Now before I reinstall the sensor, I'm just going to place some anti-seize compound on the threads and this is good practice, so it doesn't uh, obviously seize up on you if you try to remove it in the future. Now you don't have to over tighten these, it's really around 15 or 16 foot pounds on average. So just don't overdo it, but just give it a good snug. Okay, make sure you reconnect the harness connector. Okay, put it back on its mount. And again, we have this clip down here, and that's it, you're all set.